the assignment. There is also the uh, description of um, securities in these agreements. And I think that there's um, an article in the Ontario Farm Rev of two, three weeks ago, and it's actually, his name is Garth Manning, and he is the retired president of the Ontario Bar, no, yeah, I think it is the Ontario Bar Association, and basically your best avenue is do not sign. People are not told this. And even when they go to their lawyers, these agreements are horrific. It, it, it took me literally, what, three, four days to get through one agreement. Leaseholder agreement only. The road user agreements, they're pages upon pages upon pages. And, and I'm shaking my head. And, and the one, I, I, I couldn't believe it, they have right in the document that all permits will be at the sole discretion of the uh, depart the director of trans transportation. Now, how can you possibly have one staff member having sole discretion over permits? This is how ridiculous it is. But I'm going to tell you right now, I am extremely disgusted with staff. Any of our municipal councillors who try to actually take a stand on this, it is their own staff that's turning on them. The one fellow who wants to pass this by, well, the first words out of the CAO's mouth is, gee, I hope you got $250,000 to go to court with. That was the response of the CAO. Because no one even understands how municipal government actually works. You have staff. Staff works only for the corporation. They do not work for you. If you think in any way, shape, or form municipal staff is working for you, give your head a shake. And that goes for the CAO as well. Not all of them are bad. I, gotta, I have to do that. Because not all of them are bad. Because in southwestern Ontario, one mayor and his clerk are taking this on themselves. And a deputy mayor. And they were at the multi-municipal. And she's very, very helpful. But then on the other hand, when you elect your council and they have a clerk, it is the clerk and the council that is responsible to you. And they are actually to stand up to their staff and the province. Now, a lot of the municipalities will be told that they are creatures of the province and that the province has complete control over them. Not if the province is breaking the law. If the province is violating the Criminal Code of Canada and a municipality follows through on that, then what does that say about your municipality? But no one knows the law, no one understands the law, and so now we have the Ontario Energy Board basically perpetrating a fraud. Because the lawyers present section 41, subsection 9. The, when you go to court with a piece of legislation, judges will tell you time and time again, you must read the legislation in its entirety to know and understand the intent of the legislation. So I did that. So I have read through the Green Energy Act. I have read through all the regulations. Do you know there's a regulation for clotheslines? <laughs> there is. Under the Green Energy Act, though, they talk about appliances. They talk about regulations where the municipalities must cre create conservation plans. They talk about how the municipalities, if they're going to be planning for new public buildings, they must be built so that they will conserve energy, and so on and so forth. Nothing in there about the turbines. And there is one piece of regulation under the Green Energy Act for those who would like to put solar panels on a building, you have to subscribe to the building code. So there are only about five regulations under the Green Energy Act. But then you have, like I said, all of the various schedules under, sec under Bill C-115, or Bill 115. And then you are referred to the, the Environmental Protection Act and the new section there. And then you are referred to, this is fun, Regulation 35909. So I went through Regulation 35909, 
and they're still exempt. But it took me about an hour for each part of this one section because of the verbiage or the words that were in those sections to actually figure out what the heck they were trying to say. Finally, when I got it down pat, gee, they're exempt. Who's they? The renewable energy proponent. So if you are planning on going to the Environmental Review Tribunal, all you will be doing is um, stalling them for a while. You do have the power to stop these. It's up to you and it's up to your municipal council. And I would, if I would suggest that you ask your municipal council to contact the multi-municipal group. Because there's a movement afoot in this province. When you have 15 to 20 municipalities going to be taking a bylaw back to their clerks to try and get it passed, that's a movement. So now it's up to your municipalities. Do you have the coordinates of the multi-municipal group? That is only for municipalities, and that is why I've given it to Beth, Beth to give to the councillors. If they don't contact this multi-municipal group, your council is failing you. That's all I have to say. Um, so, excuse me. Can you can you uh, repeat what the bylaw says? Like in, in We're trying to keep that kind of under wraps. Oh, okay. but it, because if the turbine companies get drift of it. Oh, yeah. oh okay. so but it'll 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 be something that can. Yes. Stop. Okay. And what is the name of Jill? One. It's just Bill 150. Well, it's part of the Green Energy and Economy Act. Okay. Try finding it. Have fun with that. It took me a long time to find her, but I did. Okay. <laughs> but that's the whole thing. You guys can do this. You really can. One municipality actually has stopped them time and time and time again, and that's Aaron Elderly. And actually, the deputy mayor of Aaron Elderly is the chair of the multi-municipal. And whenever they come tripping into town, he pulls out the bylaw and he says, okay, this is what you have to do. So now we're just putting two of them together because a lot of municipal governments do not have the intestinal fortitude to take his bylaw and say, well, here, this is what you've got to do before you can come here. Because he is a force to be reckoned with. I guess that's why he's the chair of the multi-municipal. But he knows his stuff. So... That's what I've been working on these last three weeks. I have a full binder here. Um, I also have um, court challenges in there for Gray County. <coughs> Gray County has made a mess. And I think that's why a lot of the municipalities in Gray County are having a very difficult time with this. You know, and, and you have to get on your county councils as well. In regards to private property owners, though, in Clearview Township, <coughs> Uh, a fellow decided to try and have an injunction done to stop the wind turbine project from going up because it would be affecting his property. He jumped the gun a bit, but what the judge said was, once the contracts have been signed, the plan has been registered, and the shovel hits the dirt, then you have your injunction to stop the turbines. So now he is waiting for the plans to be registered so that he can go forward with his injunction. When you're doing an injunction, no, you cannot jump the gun because he had to pay out a lot of money. He had to pay for all of their costs. So you've got to get organized. You have to have people that are prepared to donate. In southwestern Ontario, just with the environmental review tribunals, because nobody understood that they were going to lose right from the get-go anyways, they have spent millions of dollars in the environmental review tribunals. And the only time they ever won was for the Blanding Turtle on Crown land, not private property. So... Do not even think about the environmental review tribunals. But your municipalities, they can also get into, uh, they can be doing references, they can do judicial reviews, as long as they ask the proper questions. And they need to have some half-decent lawyers. 
Because like I said, I've been going through all of these road user agreements and I'm going, why would anybody put that in there? But that, again, is at the behest of the Ontario Energy Board. And so the council and their legal counsel in these municipalities feel they have to do it, when in fact they don't. They need to challenge it properly in the courts. Because it would be like me coming to you and saying, okay, you have to enter into an agreement with Jack, and Jack gets to use your property as collateral, but he doesn't necessarily have to pay it back, but you will. <laughs> so think about it. That, that's the very low, simple level of what is happening. So that's breaking the law. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. So um, you talked about the blending terms. Can we, would it be possible to use the endangered species? No. It's been done and done and done and done and done under the Environmental Review Tribunals. Private property, the Endangered Species Act is not applicable to private property. What about the, uh, the birds and hay? They're not going to... That's because uh, the OFA has negotiated on behalf of all of the farmers that the farmers will not take off their first cut of hay. Hmm. <laughs> what? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. This is huge. What is this is the whole thing. Yeah. Tell them. Explain, explain to them. Explain that. Yeah. Because <laughs> of the bobolinks, which yeah. technically are not necessarily endangered, uh, the OFA, on behalf of all of the farmers in this room, has negotiated and you will not be allowed to take off your first cut of hay because you will be disturbing the bobolinks. And you may harm them. And I think that's next year. It's either this year or next year. July. July. And yeah, that's private property and they're going to put, wow. It's been negotiated on behalf of you farmers. That's the problem. Does that mean even if there are no barbed links within 100 miles, that still applies in the first cut? Yes, it does. Okay. And, and then what about wolf violet with the, with the migrating bird? Is it irrelevant? Does it That's matter? irrelevant. That's irrelevant. And yet one turtle on a crowd can yeah. be the deal breaker. Yes. Liz, what, in your mind's eye, we're dissecting all of this. What is the whole motive? What is, where, where is this leading us to? What is this, this is to remove you off of the rural land. I have the government reports on this. I'm not, you know, some conspiracy theorist or anything else. I literally have the documents. And I've told you guys about them time and time and time and time and time again. And the reports are investing in people, creating a human capital society, small rural and remote communities, an anatomy of risk, and Ontario in the creative age. Huh? The what? proof wow. is all in those documents. <laughs> and I actually had one counselor, and he is the only counselor in the entire province who asked me to email him those documents. And I did. One counselor out of how many counselors have I done seminars for? How many counselors have I emailed with, and so on and so forth. And it's right in those documents. It's in those documents to remove every Ontarian's democratic rights, or we will end up like California. It's right in there. And all democratic rights must not be allowed for environmental or financial debate. You are not to have any democratic rights in regards to those two issues. And California will be broke before it's life in the ocean. California is already broke. That's why they're saying your rights, your democratic rights, must be removed. <coughs> it's in the reports. I've been squawking about this for five years now. We are Greece. We just haven't had the riots yet. <laughs> Because it's exactly the same information. Richard Florida not only did Ontario in the creative age, he did Europe in the creative age. He did China in the creative age. He's a broken record. He is now in New Brunswick, in Nova Scotia. He's already been out to British Columbia. He is an urbanist. I know quite a bit about it. But the fun part was actually the director of research for the University of Toronto in regards to the report investing in people 
This is where all day kindergarten came from. This is where the smart meters came from. This is where the price of electricity came from to force you to conserve. This is where this all came from. This is where you are to be charged extra to support green energy. <coughs> but then in his name is Michael Trebleco. And so now he is at Harvard. I guess he took over for Dalton. Based on the fact that the turbines moved to his yard and his value on his property went down. And so he started speaking out about them and I busted his butt because he's the one that recommended it in the first place. This is exactly the report that, and it is the University of Toronto panel on governments of Ontario. They didn't even use all the information that they received. Are they so there still available on the internet? I got it. No, but I mean, can someone else go in and get them on the internet? Sure. You want everyone emailing, emailing you and getting them from you? No, but okay, I, I'm pretty sure I mean. you could probably get them online. I know. It I, depends. I it's quite a few years ago that you had Yeah, it. like, I've, I've been them. trying to get the information out on this for fire. years. And, you know, nobody bites because nobody about. actually wants, and, and it's not big, huge reports. It, it's not like they're the six, 700 pages of legislation I read. These reports are not long. But there's all these recommendations, and it's all there.